Ridley Scott is here from Alien to Blade Runner to Thelma and Louise. He has directed some of Hollywood's most acclaimed and interesting films. Last year, his film Gladiator won five Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Then came the sequel to Silence of the Lambs called Hannibal, starring Anthony Hopkins and Julianne Moore. His latest is the much talked about Black Hawk Down. It is based on the 1997 book by Mark Bowden. It is a story of the October 3rd, 1993 U.S. raid in Mogadishu, Somalia, that left 19 American soldiers and over 100 Somalians dead. Here is the trailer for this much talked about film, Black Hawk Down. Man, crawl! Somebody help that man! That's all it is. No one gets left behind, you know that. Nobody has to be a hero. Sometimes turns out that way. Pleased to welcome Ridley Scott here for the first time to talk about this rather remarkable movie. Uh, Mark Bowden was on this show and he had with him a couple of Rangers and we, we talked about it then. At the time of the book, everybody talked about uh, this as some extraordinary sense of what it is like uh, to look death and to look heroism right in the eye. I was doing a profile of Ridley Scott while he was making Hannibal and I said to him, what's next? And he said, Black Hawk Down. And at that time I wondered uh, what you would do and, and how you would make this movie. And now we know and a lot of people are talking about it, not only because, uh, not only because of what happened there, but what it led to in terms of American foreign policy and people saying, mm -hmm. taking note of the fact that Osama bin Laden mm -hmm. on observing what happened said the Americans will always run when casualties come. Mm -hmm. I think that was part of the experience. Um, but, you know, this, this was 1993, and the, we had special forces going in there for all the right reasons, right. humanitarian reasons. Um, uh, the event that was meant to take half an hour took 18 and a half hours. Uh, we lost 19 guys, we killed a thousand Somalians, and we actually did the job we set out to do, which was to arrest what they call two tier one personalities, i.e. the left and right hand of, let's say, Farah Hadid. Right. And the government reacted and withdrew the troops within two weeks. The army were embarrassed and annoyed because the whole event was perceived as a military fiasco. And of course it wasn't because they, they, they did what they set out to do. We should say President Clinton was then president, yep. and chairman of the Joint Chiefs at the time was? Uh, was, um... Was Colin Powell or not? Powell, That's yeah, what it was Powell, yeah. And I think everybody slightly withdrew from this thing as if it was a fiasco. So when I, Jerry approached me with Bowden, Mark Bowden's book, and then the screenplay, which was interesting but needed better work, because when you read the book, the book was so vivid, portray, vividly portrayed a blow-by-blow, second-by-second process and cause and effect which really became the anatomy of a war. So it, you know, from my point of view as a, as a filmmaker and storyteller, you know, we always looking for a good story, a good tale. So that's what I was looking to begin with and I looked at the process. I love process yeah. uh, and I love cause and effect. And because right in there you find all the best people. <laughs> yeah. Or you find people at their extremities, stretched to their extremities, and that's why it becomes interesting. What happened is it started to unearth itself because then I, I, I saw it was perceived as an embarrassment. Why? Then I remember, the, rem, of course, remember the event, but it was like a glimpse, mm -hmm. a flash of two bodies being dragged through the streets, right. a negotiation for a pilot called Durant, who was released after 11 days, and and it was over. And I wonder what the hell was that all about, you know? And there it was, here it was. Army annoyed with government, government embarrassed about the process, and what followed was Clinton's decision, or Clinton's government, cabinet decision, to essentially remove ground forces, military aid, from f the American for foreign policy, really for the next nine years until September the 11th, right? Right. Uh, you've got some encounters that have occurred since 1993, but there have been airstrikes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we made the movie and uh, started in March, ended in June, looked at what you call the director's cut, which is a presentation of where I am now with, to the studio and to Jerry and uh, 
it was perceived as being we thought we really had something um, what do you think you had uh, accuracy and yet it worked as a kind of yeah, mainstream movie yeah. I mean I, I find myself in the process of making mainstream movies mainstream movies for the most part tends to indicate a fairly high budget mm. very high fairly high budgets tend to indicate that the bottom line is all about commerce mm. and of course it is and so I've, I've got to wear a kind of two heads in the process because I still think I'm a creatively uh, driven um, but at the same time I'm honoring an agreement and uh, pact unwritten with a studio which says I will do the best I can for this given amount of money. Hmm. This and given amount of money was about 90 million was it? Yeah, or? yeah. Hmm. I mean in today's world, in today's prices, what, what it was was uh, a, it wasn't exactly bargain basement but it was actually a good price for what it cost mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you cast it. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no Mel Gibson here. Nope. There is no Tom Cruise here. Ask Mel. There is no. No, 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 I didn't. No, you no, did no, ask no, Mel. No, no, that was another one. <laughs> no, <laughs> Mel says my knees have gone. <laughs> I don't think my so, knees mate. Are gone. I don't think so. No, right. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't ask Tom Hanks. You didn't. Who just did oh. Saving Private Ryan? Uh, it's two. How many hours? Two, two, two hours and two twenty-three. Two twenty-three. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they. Uh, but you got. You got Sam yep. Shepard. Yep, and uh, I think what we went for was, uh, you know, the the original story takes a hundred is a hundred characters. It's basically seventy five Rangers and twenty five Delta, uh, who are the new the the Rangers are the less experienced, and the Delta are the the uh, big daddies of the process of covert forces. And um, uh, y you can't make a movie about a hundred characters, so. We really, one of the hardest problems was reworking the material, the writers, God bless them, till they were driven crazy, till we could get it distilled down to who, how, what's the smallest number of people I can tell the story with. It came to 37 people. So you're still not having, you know, most movies evolve and revolve around two central characters, the guy and the gal, or mm -hmm. the good guy and the bad guy, and everything else circulates mm -hmm. around that. Um, in here, it's segments of a jigsaw puzzle, and everyone has a voice. And therefore, I couldn't get any smaller than that. And therefore, it was really on act of faith. I got talked to these guys saying, you know, you want to do the film? Like Josh, who's heading certainly Into way upwards. Superstar. Yep, absolutely. And Ewan McGregor, where it's really a phone call saying, will you do this? It's not a big part, but it's really interesting. And it will, I guarantee you a really interesting experience. Uh, Tom Sizemore, Sam Shepard, yeah. Ewan McGregor. You know, it's a good cast. Yeah. Um, you hope the story does what? The, the uh, your telling of it does what as a movie, as an experience? Well, anybody in their right mind, um, if you're making a war movie, is making an anti-war movie, right? So, first of all... If you make it well, it's an anti-war movie because it shows the horror of war. Yes, if you make it well and it's uh, seriously intended, which the book is, and, there's an, and there was no reason to bend the truth. The book, you know, fiction is nearly always far more remarkable in fact. So I just, everything in the film is absolutely from the reports of the guys, how they saw things, the hand on the ground, the guy getting blown in half, the, all that yeah. stuff was, that's not me, that's Miss, in there. The guy missing the rope. The guy, the, or the guy missing the rope still doesn't know how he missed the rope. So we helped him there by having an RPG go at the chopper. And, yeah. uh, and those choppers weigh eight tons and turn, can turn 90 degrees in one and a half seconds. Yeah. So the guy's going to take evasive action and down he goes, right, because the rope snaps and, you know. Before we go, because I want to see the movie, here is Mark Bowden, uh, who wrote the original book um, by Hawk Down and two of the Rangers. Roll tape. Well, what made it a great story to me initially, what attracted me was the notion of 99 soldiers pinned down and surrounded in this ancient African city fighting for their lives. It just conjured up images to me of, a, of classic military confrontations like the Little Bighorn or, or the Alamo. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought, Alamo. I said, this is... You know, this is a story of people looking at the inevitability of death right. and thinking of comrades and thinking of, of, and not thinking of courage, but acting with courage. Right. And what does, what does that experience do to somebody? You know, I, I grew up uh, listening to the stories that my uncles and my father told about World War II. And, and of course, we all were exposed to all the movies and, and, and television, which dealt with war subject matter when we were younger. Um, too young myself to have fought in the war in Vietnam, 
But as a writer, I long felt that uh, that combat would afford just the richest, most dramatic material for a writer if you could get inside the heads of the soldiers who were fighting it, and ideally on on both sides. Were you at that time saying, "Oh my God, this is this is not going to be pretty, and we're not going to get out of here"? Yeah, you're exactly right. At that point in time, I realized, well, if we can clean this up and get these guys out of here and get them back to us, everything could still be okay. But then that, from, from the second that helicopter shot, got shot down, things started to break down very rapidly. I think there were two other helicopters that got hit within about uh, a span of several minutes right after that. Another one crashed, and I think another one was able to limp back to the uh, site that it had taken off from. Was there, today for you, Dan, is there a moment that sears in your soul and brain more than any other? A time? Well, there wasn't anything that really leapt right out and grabbed me. It kind of creeped up on me as things started to come apart. And like many military battles, uh, a big problem was communication. And communication tends to break down when the situation gets dire. And so for me, what I really remember was this creeping feeling as as we started to drive around the city, which we did for quite a while, in an attempt to pick these guys up, uh, I just had this overwhelming feeling that we were just going to continue to drive around the city until uh, we were all dead because we were taking in incredible numbers of casualties, it seemed at the time, on the convoy. As we were watching this, you told me that you had arranged some screenings yeah. at military installations. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the response is the, what? The response was... And why is it important for people to see this of the family? Um, it's, like, it? it's like closure because I think everything was pulled, the rug was, it was swept under the rug, the whole experience. And I think the guys were then shipped up, I think the next port of call was Germany. The dead were sent back to, to the U.S. And um, it felt like it had all been for nothing. And so I think this is why the Army partly wanted to have the film made because then if it was made properly, we could show and illustrate what did happen and platform the discussion as to what really went on, right? Mm. So therefore, it became closure. So I ran, with Jerry and I ran the film at three bases this past few days, and uh, the last of which was Bragg, um, where I met a lot of, I think, Delta and Rangers and uh, met some of the families that lost, uh, you know. And the, they were happy that you didn't pretty it up, sentimental, it, make it, too sentimental. The, very conscious of that, very conscious of what we can do sometimes in Hollywood, which is to romanticize or sentimentalize, and by doing that, soften the process, you know. And, you know, so often I think, um, you know, main, mainstream is the backbone of the industry. There's no question about it. And, and I think mainstream isn't used often enough, though, to occasionally take a serious subject and try and do a serious job on the subject. And, uh, and by doing that, get a big audience because it's still the most the biggest the most influential um, audience out there on certainly on a worldwide basis I mean Mark's book may be seen eventually aboard eventually by um, uh, I think the last count a million people two million people mm. but if this film goes right it'll be seen by millions of people so it 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 creates discussion mm. it creates argument it, I mean, there's some of the discussions and arguments I've been having with journalists who said this is jingoistic, this is racist. I'm going, excuse me, it's racist? I've got a whole bunch of guys who, by definition, of that's the way they were and that's what happened. There was only one, uh, there was uh, Kurth and there was Afro-American, mm -hmm. and they're going in as part of Delta and Ranger into an entirely black community to help them. You know, uh, what's racist about that? <laughs> What are they saying racist about the way you portrayed the Somalians or no, something? No, 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 no. The Somalians are very happy, and the uh, whole African community are very happy about how I've represented them as really efficient and, and uh, to be reckoned with, you know? What was the hardest thing about making this movie? Um, script. Script. Getting the always right script. Is. It always, always is. is. <laughs> the goddamn material, <laughs> right? <laughs> and once I got that, the rest is really <laughs> easy. It's really fun. <laughs> How many scriptwriters took a shot at this? How many makes five, four? Uh, no, two. so we had Zalian. Two. We had uh, uh, Mark. And, and then Zalian. Uh, had a shot. No, Ken Nolan. Ken Nolan. Then Zalian. Yeah. And then, then Nolan back out with me again in Morocco, yeah. living through the process on a daily basis. And uh, 
I think as a young, really young, a real youngster, he really, in, you know, in, you know, had that. He got it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. It. Roll tape. This is troops arriving in downtown Mogadishu. You had advice from a, a bunch of army people on this, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had uh, t uh, Tom Matthews, Lee Van Osdale, Colonel yeah. Tom Matthews and Lee Van Osdale, who, uh, uh, Colonel Matthews was in charge of the air-to-ground uh, support system, which was basically he was eight and a half hours in a, in a Black Hawk, um, and uh, Lee Van Osdale was, um, represented the film as a, as a Cribs, Colonel Cribs, uh, whose works with General Garrison from what they call the ops, which is JOC, right. where the other amazing thing is they're televising the whole thing. So you've got a general watching from above, a bit like a metaphorically the you know, yeah. the general on yeah. the hill watching the cavalry. Except he, once it's in process, he would never interfere. He would leave it to wh whoever's in charge on the ground. Where that would be Captain Steele. Yeah, and Garrison's played by Sam Shepard. Sam Shepard, yeah. who yeah. wrote some of his own lines, or no? You know, surprisingly, I thought, oh, Sam's going to Sam. come in here and redo the whole thing, <laughs> and actually, he didn't. He actually said, uh, for, "Really, do I have to say all this stuff?" And I said, "Yeah, it'd be nice." And so he was a real pleasure, unusual pleasure. Roll tape during the gun battle. Some Island shoot down the American helicopter. This is where it all began to go bad. where Garrison knows is down and they're in for trouble. That's you were so describing cool. me about the, the whole system. The first thing you do is turn the, the, uh, yeah. the, the gas off so it won't explode when you hit sure. the ground. Again, it's all about process. You switch off all the fuel lines and so you know, once you know you've lost it, you try and, uh, what they call, I guess, feathering it down. Yeah. So they try and do a, a pancake landing on its belly because the seat's got six Gs in it. The uh, undercarriage has got about six Gs in it. So if it collapses like that, your whole interior of your body can take about 12 Gs. So the assistance of the collapsing hydraulics may help you not break your back. Anybody survive that? Yeah, Bush survived Bush. that, plus two others. Um, the pilot didn't survive it. He got jammed, his legs jammed. They couldn't get him out. So he was dead. The two pilots were dead. Uh, Bush was uh, uh, Delta, who actually stood there and defended the fort, crawled out of the wreckage, st stood there for... Uh, and kept them at bay for, I think, uh, almost 45 minutes uh, until they could get a small bird in there and, uh, I think, discharge all his 11 magazines. Is there anything to the notion that, I mean, you are a commercial director, but mm -hmm. you've also had a long experience directing commercials, yeah. pure commercials, sure. as well as sort of pieces that are smaller, like Thelma and Louise that are groundbreaking films. Is there anything to this idea that a great director wants to have in his or her body of work mm -hmm. a war film? Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily, um, but you know, it's like, I mean, asked, but what films would you not make? And I'd say nothing. Um, it all, depend, all depends on the material. So if someone came in to me about the, the you know, the Twin Towers, yeah. um, yeah. The next year, and it was a great script. It's all about the material. It's all about the, and great material drives great characters and drive character. And that's what we do. I mean, hopefully. So you're I'm, looking for great material. Yeah, I'm. I'm an, uh, theoretically, I'm a filmmaker and entertainer. I'm not a documentarian, although it's nice to get one close, which is if this you can, one. which is this one, which is the closest I've had before. Much success with this film. Yeah, thank you very much. Sir. Ridley Scott. Black Hawk Down opens nationwide uh, this Friday, January 18th. Already getting a lot of nominations and a lot of talk. Back in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>